<laughs> a massive day in Wisconsin Badgers fandom absolutely delivers Chucky Hepburn. Chucky freaking Hepburn. While well, Wisconsin women's hockey goes to the Frozen Four, we are here in LeBron Arena with no Clark. We're, we're breaking it all down. We're talking basketball. We're talking hockey. We're talking a potential fourth overtime in Potsdam, New York. It's the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good evening. Thank you for enjoying your March weekend with a six pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stummers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stummers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Noah, look at us. Yeah, look who who who'd have thought? Who would have thought? Who'd have, who'd have thought? <laughs> they they let us into the building. Uh, they they let you in the building every week, but uh, <laughs> um. Regardless, uh, we are here with Noah Clark of iHeartRadio and 1070 The Game in Madison. Um, talking some Wisconsin women's hockey, but before we do, let's talk basketball. Let's let's talk the matinee event of the game. It was March. It was madness? It was madness. Um, madness. Um, I don't know about you upstairs, but... Look, if those of you don't know, which if you're listening to the show, I, I know that you know, but with the Wisconsin Badgers win in the semifinals of the Big Ten basketball tournament, they advanced to the final for the first time since 2015 when Wisconsin won the Big Ten tournament. They were a one seed on Selection Sunday. First time they've been to the finals since 2015. This is the first year they've won multiple games in the tournament since 2017. The first time they got back to the semifinals since 2019. Greg Gard clicking all the buttons. I don't know about you, but uh, down in the lower level, the the no cheering in the press box, that might have been that might have been broken a little bit. Uh, <laughs> with uh, me sitting with the student radio guys, how is how were the vibes up in the press box at the tail end of the game uh, here in Lebon Arena? Well, you could the, the let me just tell you this: the vibes in the press box area were immaculate. The most of the energy was coming from me. I, I, my, my, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Most of the energy was coming from me because I was just sitting up there like next to me, Joey Bonadonna, who's yeah. WSUM's finest, was calling the game, was calling the game today for Wisconsin and St. Lawrence. I was right next to him. And I just like, when like Chucky got like the, the, the game tying, the, mm. the game tying shot. And then the Max Klesman shot, I'm just grabbing onto him, just like going, trying not to scream because he's on the air. <laughs> and, and I was trying so hard. And then even during this game today, like at Lebon, I was fist pumping so hard today. And, you know, the atmosphere at Lebon was incredible today. And the atmosphere in Minnesota probably was even more spectacular, given the fact that Wisconsin won against Purdue, which, thank God, <laughs> very happy for that because I was sick and tired of seeing Purdue win. But, yeah. Uh um, I, I had a similar experience with the guys, uh, do, doing the radio call for the women's hockey game. They had to wait for the women's hockey game or for the men's basketball game to end in Minneapolis as, uh, Chrissy Birdsall and Anthony Winker were on the, was it Anthony? Anthony's out there, right? Yeah. Uh, on the call, on the call in, in Minneapolis for the big 10 men's basketball tournament. So the guys here calling the women's hockey game are just being fans about the basketball game. Meanwhile, they, they are trying to watch the hockey game, but they are not having to work until that basketball game is over. Um, let's talk about the game a little bit because it led right into, I mean, would have led right into the women's hockey game, but ended up o overflowing into it um, because it goes, it goes to overtime. Wisconsin wins in overtime, 76, 75 over Purdue in a game where, Oh boy, if the conversation isn't about the officiating <laughs> coming out of this one, Purdue shot 32 free throws to Wisconsin's nine free throw attempts. Um, this game not doing much for the how Zach Eady is officiated is a point of conversation. What conversation. Even is about? What even is about? There's, there's, no way to know, according to Big Ten officials. Um, granted, there aren't Big Ten officials. They officiate all, all conferences, but for the most part. But 
I, I don't want to focus that much on the officiating. I, I want to focus on the fantastic play of, of a few guys. Um, AJ store for one high volume shooter, 23 shots from the field, uh, gets eight of them and still manages 20 points overall. AJ store taking it to the hoop, six rebounds. What else is there to say about AJ store at this point after 30 points yesterday? I mean, he was incredible today. Like when they needed a basket from him and they needed a clutch play, he came in so clutch for this team. And I, I love the fact that he was, you know, that Wisconsin was able to get him to come from St. John's over to, you know, Madison, Wisconsin, which was very incredible for this Badger team. And he reminds me again, and I feel like a lot of Badger fans have seen this, but he reminds me of another version of Johnny Davis, just mm -hmm. a little bit better in the three point game, mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, better, you know, not as good on the defensive side, but still can make you pay on the defensive side. And he really, you know, is clutch when it mattered today, he was able to show up and he was able to make a few good plays. Like the one shot that Carter Gilmore bounced off the rim and then he picks it up and jams it through like, Holy cow. I mean, that was, that was fun. And, and AJ store. I mean, man, I love that. He's on my team. Hate to see him on another team. If he ever, if he, if, if he was on another team, I would hate to play against him at this point. He seemingly has a highlight reel dunk every game yes. at this point. I, I mean, he has had a highlight reel dunk in all three of these big 10 tournament games so far. And look, the putback Carter Gilmore don't love that. You're taking three, three point attempts in this one, but you made, he made one. one, you made he one. Won. And Give yourself the green light at that point, I guess, because it leads to an all-time putback by by AJ Store. Um, this was a real team win. This is look, AJ Store, 20 points, Chucky Hepburn, 22 points. We'll get to him. But for Wisconsin to have three players foul out in this one says a lot about the, the ceiling of this Wisconsin team, in my opinion, for it to go out and beat a Purdue team with Zach Eady putting up 28 points of his own, making 14 of 19 free throw attempts. If Wisconsin can have an all around performance from these guys in their lineup, I mean, I, I've said on the show, I think they're ceiling a second weekend. What do you think? What, what is this game doing for you in terms of evaluating what Wisconsin's ceiling is in the NCAA tournament? You know, when they were back in February, I kind of wrote this team off as they will not make it out of the first weekend. They struggled a lot, you know, in the month of February, just winning games, just even making a simple layup. I think that was a very frustrating part. Now, here we are fast forward into March, and they're playing for a chance at a Big Ten, you know, tournament title. And this was a really great performance and, and a really great showcase, as you said, of what Wisconsin as a team looked like today and just really impressive stuff seeing from AJ store, seeing guys like Max Klesman. I mean, like Chris Hodges had three minutes on the floor and they were meaningful minutes. And you don't see that from a guy who rarely comes off the bench and plays. So this was a really good job by the Badgers to get, you know, the, the win and Gut it out. I mean, towards the finish line. I mean, and and I mean emphasis on gutting it out. I mean, at the end of that game, they had, you know, three players that fouled out of that game. And even Greg Gard at the end, you know, raise your hand if you fouled out. <laughs> you know, so really incredible stuff by the Badgers. And they're playing now for a Big Ten championship tomorrow. And if they come back with this same energy, I think there's nobody in the country that could stop them. And, and they could go on for a long, long, long run. Uh, maybe you know, even to the elite eight, I think their ceiling, you, you're right, is the sweet 16 though. I think that's right. I, I mean, I think you can get a big game from, from somebody in, in the sweet 16 and give, give yourself a chance to go to the elite eight. But I, I mean, I said on the show yesterday, if they beat Purdue, I'm all in, I'm all in. Um, I, I think they, it also incredibly impressive performance, taking care of the ball, only five turnovers uh, on the day against a Frankly, pretty stalwart Purdue defense while forcing 16 to Purdue. Wisconsin, 15 points off of turnovers to Purdue's zero. Huge. And there, there's nobody who showed up more huge in that department than one Chucky. Can we say MF and Chucky MF and Hepburn in this one? <laughs> um, 22 points on nine of 12 shooting, one of two from three, two rebounds, four assists. Only fouled once, um, a very 
surprising one one foul from Chucky Hepburn with tough defensive assignments. He gets the game tying layup on the ATO. Also, gotta say, all timer of a Greg Guard coaching performance. This doing wonders for, for the Greg Guard discourse. Uh, whichever side you are on. I questioned the, the decision, the, the clearly predetermined decision before AJ Store caught the ball across half court on the final possession of regulation, whether or not going to the timeout, the, the play out of the timeout was a good call. Um, I wasn't sure. I understood that that's kind of Greg Gard's mantra. And I've said before that Greg Gard is good, at, good on the ATOs. He, he proved it. I mean, a beautifully drawn, drawn a bucket for Chucky Hepburn, who delivers at the rim. And it's just enough. It's just enough from Chucky Hepburn in this one. What do you, what do you make of his performance? Man, it was a classic Chucky Hepburn performance. You know, great on the defensive end. And then on the other side, on the offensive end, gives you at least another option for your, for, for the Badgers in terms of scoring. And really impressive stuff down the finish. You know, getting the game-tying bucket to go into overtime and then going in overtime and getting the getting the charge of his life on Braden Jones to foul Braden, you know, Braden Jones, Braden Smith, you know, to foul Braden Smith out. And without that charge, I mean, this is a different game. So Chucky, give credit to him today. I mean, he was, he, he made Purdue's life miserable on both sides of the floor. And the same thing with AJ store with Chucky Epperman, when they needed a bucket, he was there. And when they needed a defensive stop too, he was there. And the biggest moment of his life came with that charge late in that game against Braden Smith. Incredible stuff. Yeah. And, and it's not that look, that block charge call today <laughs> all around questionable yeah. to say, to say the least uh, on, on both sides. Look, Tyler wall got fouled out of the game for being run over by Zach Eady. Um, being ran over by a tree. I, I know he said that we were not going to make the conversation about the officiating, but, but it's a, it's a discussion point for in, in this game. Uh, look, I, I don't, I don't even want to give out a nip in this game. The, the a needs improvement player, because this is just an all around team win. If you're going to give it to someone, maybe you give it to Tyler wall. Uh, he four points on two of nine shooting. Again, he shot four, three point attempts. And I don't, like that from him. So if you're going to give it to anybody, give it to Tyler Wall, but give the MVP to Chucky Hepburn. Move on because it's it's an awesome, awesome game from him with a 79.2% effective field goal percentage in this one. Absurd. Any final burning thoughts on the Big Ten basketball tournament and, and what, what lies ahead for the Badgers? Well, it is going to be a very interesting game you know, for how they play Illinois, I think, you know, Wisconsin, they've learned their lesson, you know, over the last few games now, and they're starting to look like a team again. They're starting to look like the team that we saw way back at the beginning of this season when they were sixth in the country, you know, halfway through, and they kind of fell apart to Nebraska. This game against Illinois, don't be surprised if we're going to see another incredible battle against the, the fighting Illini, but all in all, on Wisconsin, man. I mean, what a what a great day. What a great day it was to see Wisconsin pull out against Purdue. Because if I had to see Zach Eady go to another Big Ten championship game, I was going to be very, very mad. So it was a great day. And it could have gotten worse. It could have gotten worse, but the the vibes are are unmatched right now. The vibes are immaculate <laughs> here, here in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, as I'm all in on the Wisconsin basketball team. Look, regardless of whether or not they win tomorrow, all in for me is this team can make the second weekend of the NCAA tournament because I think that's a realistic ceiling year over year for this this team. I am also, Noah, I'm going to say it. Go ahead. I have doubted for too long, I think. I think I've doubted for too long. And I am now all in on this Wisconsin women's hockey team. I think they can. Now, I don't want to say they will. But the national championship, I'm they they might need to make room for another banner over there that you can see in the background. As Wisconsin beats the St. Lawrence Saints 4-0.
in the regional final of the NCAA Women's Hockey Tournament. I have a stat I want to reference in the game notes over there. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave you to vamp for a second here. But um, <laughs> a big win for the Badgers over a team that, look, if, if you listened to the post-game interviews for, for um, the, the St. Lawrence Saints head coach, they, they gave it their all. That this is a, a St. Lawrence team that left it all out on the ice. And Wisconsin showed they were just the better team in this one, frankly, at, at the end of the day, putting up 41 shots to St. Lawrence's 21. A hotly contested first period, but a first period that started real hot. Um, yeah, vibes were immaculate. And if you haven't seen it, uh, you, you can follow me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus. Moment in the first period there where this crowd found out as the game was ending. We got some multitasking Badger fans that uh, Wisconsin had beaten Purdue. There was no way Wisconsin was losing this game after that crowd just going bananas in the middle of a timeout before finding out whether or not their, <laughs> their player is headed to the box for five minutes. Um, Wisconsin getting getting this win. What did you learn about this team today as Wisconsin advances to yet another Frozen Four? Man, they were relentless today. I mean, in, in you know, in the first, I'll just take the mic. Man, they were relentless today. You know, in the first period, Casey O'Brien got right off the bat and got the scoring started right away. 16 seconds in. 16 seconds in. Absurd. Did, didn't even know that. But 16 seconds in, she gets the goal. And it's really impressive what, you know, this Badger team was able to do. And then just the fight that this team had. I think you look at it, Kedrick, in this game today, Ava McNaughton, you know, made only 24 saves, but Wisconsin shot the puck, you know, 47 times on goal today. Really impressive stuff by this team. And they just, you know, did not give up. They did not give up even when they were, even when the score was 1-0 going in to the second period, they still were able to find a way to score. And they scored four goals in the third in those last eight minutes. And that was really, Three in the third, sorry. Three in the third in those last eight minutes. And that's really what this team has been all year. They've been really, 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 you know, determined. They don't quit. They're, you know, they finish games. We saw it against Ohio State here when they were down against the Buckeyes. They came back, they bounced back, and they were able to get a big win. And since that win, they have just been on another level and their highs, you know, are skyrocketing and now hey they're going to new hampshire right now i mean that they, they, they you couldn't have asked a better performance from this team than what they were given today i mean they fought really hard all the way to the end and now hey they're playing for another national championship potentially yeah it was a badger team that i i continue to be impressed by i continue to think the ceiling is higher and higher every time i watch them over the last few weeks i mean you and i have started doing these since just before Wisconsin played Minnesota it, to cap off the regular season or, or the penultimate series of the se regular season, rather. And I thought Wisconsin looked fine in that series, right? Dispatched of the Gophers, gave them a sweep, and that was good. The win over Ohio State, you said it. We, we have referred to it on, on this show before. That really, really might be a turning point in this season where I had my doubts that anybody could catch the Buckeyes. Ever since then, Wisconsin's done nothing to show that they they can't catch the Buckeyes. This is a St. Lawrence team that is a good offense, a quite good offense. Abby Hustler is the second most uh, power play goals in the country. Ju Julia Gosling is also very good, but both of them played really well today. Julia Gosling had, what, 10 shots on goal in this one? Um, and that's why I think you're selling Ava McNaughton short in this one, in my opinion. Only 25 saves, only a 25 save shutout for the freshman goaltender in, in this one. After we doubted her a little bit coming out of last weekend, um, that she allowed the two goals late and to, to the Ohio State Buckeyes. And I think I'm willing to forgive those a little bit. I, I had said on the show, but the first 10 minutes of, of the game against Minnesota in the WCHA final face off semifinals, I got everybody shook. That got me shook. That got you shook. But uh, by all accounts, from the man himself, that got head coach Mark Johnson a little bit shook. Uh, but she has been rock solid ever since. A, a standout performance, but by Ava McNaughton. Can she do it? Can she? Can she have her her Jesse Vetter moment? It's possible. I mean, the way that she played today. 
I mean, it was phenomenal how Wisconsin came into this game defensively. They looked really solid. Yeah. They looked really, really solid all, you know, all day long. And going back to the final faceoff, I mean, they, they, they just didn't look like themselves defensively. Their offense was really great, but defensively they were very sloppy. They, you know, everybody was kind of gravitating towards the puck instead of spreading out and, and setting up your defense and trying to play more man on man type of stuff. And today it was a really today that it was like with Wisconsin basketball, very good team effort, but from the goalie side of it, Ava played phenomenal. I mean, any, t you know, St. Lawrence, I think had multiple chances to try and make this game interesting, shut them down right away. I mean, in, you don't see that a lot from freshman goalies in these type of moments where there's a lot of pressure on you to win. And she stepped in right to the pressure of it. And from start to finish, 60 minutes, played lights out. And you got to give credit to, you know, Mark Johnson for making that decision. I mean, at first it was a bit questionable, you know, if he made the right decision. Now looking back on it, good choice after all. And we still got like, two more games, potentially two more games left. So, and I, I hope we get to watch this team two more times, right? Like, <laughs> so th this team is just so fun. It's so fun. It's the scoring. It's the personalities, frankly, um, in the post game interviews today, Casey, Casey O'Brien was asked, I, I don't remember by who, but somebody asked Casey O'Brien, you're kind of just staring off. Do you, do you have thoughts? And, and she just goes, I'm just thinking about Ava McNaughton. She saved us in this one. She gave us a chance to win this game. And Mark Johnson saying the same thing. The way this team has come together, the seniors, I, I, Britta Curl, I mean, two-timer for her captaincy. She plays her last game here, tearing up a little bit on the ice as she gets to walk off with some hardware, skate off with some hardware. Um, <laughs> um the personalities on this team is so much fun. What, if anything, do you think that does for this team's chemistry on the ice? And how are we seeing that come alive over the last couple of weeks? I mean, it's just, it goes back to, I think we've said this before multiple times. It goes back to Ohio State. I mean, it, 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 it everything that we've seen from this team goes back to Ohio State. When they lost and they got the doors blown off them by Ohio State, not me, not you, expected this team to come back and try and put up a fight and even when they were down in the game on Saturday against the Buckeyes, it's like, if we can just see this team have some fight, this team had a lot of fight winning that game against Ohio state and it's built and built and built. And again, what Casey O'Brien even said, you know, going into the frozen four or not the frozen four, the final face off that confidence, you know, when you have confidence, you know, it can just skyrocket. And she had, you know, and this team has had a lot of confidence since that win. I, I am hoping for, for a little bit of a basketball women's hockey crossover here. I am hoping that the way Wisconsin has changed the trajectory of its season following that regular season finale win over Ohio State. The basketball team might be able to do that with this win over Purdue today, quite, quite frankly. It, that is a, you lost to the team twice, felt the first time that maybe you didn't play the best ball you could when they lost in the regular season finale, the reports were that the vibes were actually pretty high in the locker room afterwards. They thought they played pretty well and, and took that pretty good play to, to beat this Purdue team. And if you can beat a team that, look, I mean, Wisconsin's win, that may have knocked Purdue off the number one overall seed conversation. Um, I think that's probably Houston now, quite frankly, with the way their, their predictive metrics are so good. For, for Wisconsin to beat that team, that team's going to have all the confidence in the world that they can go and win a, a few games uh, the rest of the way. Also, Tyler Wall now, if he plays in Wisconsin's next two games, he's going to break Brad Davison's record for the most games played to Badger uniform all time. Really? Did not know that. That is wild. I I am thoroughly shocked because Tyler Wall is like an unbreakable record. It does. It feels like a very unbreakable record, but then you have to realize, too, Joe Stave is the all time winning as quarterback <laughs> in Wisconsin Badgers history. So anything is possible. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly, you know, it's a high today. We're at an all time high today for this Badger team, you know, on Wisconsin, baby, on Wisconsin, uh, on, on Wisconsin. Indeed. Oh, look at this. We had some goaltender action going out. Is that Jane Gervais skating out there? Uh, we got a goalie skating out. Um, 
in in some Wisconsin uniforms right right now. It, it is six sixteen p.m. This game ended like an hour and a half ago. Um, and just to also give you guys a heads up, you probably will see this episode later. But Minnesota and Clarkson, that game is still going on as we speak. Even when this episode drops, this game is still going on as we speak. I kid you not. So, are you making that out? Who who is that? Or is that okay? That's what I thought. I think it's Jane based on the helmet. Um, <laughs> I'm getting so distracted. It's it's the seventh period right now, not overtime. The seventh period. Uh, ESPN Plus showing on the broadcast. It, it is not the fourth overtime, not four OT. Yep. We got a period of seventh. Um, gross, just absolutely disgusting. Um, so Wisconsin wins this one with a goal in the first period quick and then three goals in pretty quick succession in in the third period to to put this one away for nothing uh Layla Edwards with two goals of her own she becomes the fifth badger with 20 goals this season a beyond impressive performance sophomores on this team sophomores on this team dogs <laughs> dogs, dogs right um and then also too we I, we forgot to mention Casey O'Brien broke 70 today yeah, for 70 points. She's the second Multiple badger. 70 point scorers in the same season. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. And these two with O'Brien and Sims, I know Kirsten Sims didn't really have much on the scoring, you know, on the stat sheet today, but those she two. Assist, didn't she? she assisted on the first goal. Oh, she did? Okay. Yeah, she did. I didn't really, I didn't see her at a lot today, but even still, like two guys, you know, two skaters that are Patty Gaz, you know, finalists. So. Yeah, and they're going to have their teammates with them in New Hampshire uh, with a chance to accept the Patty Kazmaier Award, all, all of them. Do the right thing. <laughs> Do the right thing. Uh, Kirsten Sims became the first skater this season since Daryl Watts to have uh, a 70-point season in a Badger uniform, and now Wisconsin has two skaters with 70-point seasons in the same season. That has to be a record. Yeah, I, I would love to talk to somebody smarter than me. Maybe... Maybe Nicole back there knows. Yeah. Um, Nicole or Todd might know. Have, has there been multiple 70-point scorers on the same team in a season? Mm -hmm. um, because I can't think of one. Um, but we'll, we'll try to try to leave it here as we we wrap up on, on the show as Wisconsin heads to the Frozen Four, two wins away from a national title. If McNaughton, of course, fantastic. Layla Edwards, fantastic. Um I don't think there's really an NIP award to give out to this one. Maybe you give to Caroline Harvey for punching, yeah, for, punching yeah, Abby Hustler in the for head. Being a, for being a goon. <laughs> for no reason. No reason. <laughs> Heads to the box after she shoves Abby Hustler down way Enjoy behind the play. Ryan Reeves today. Oh, Full Ryan Reeves. But that's what you get from Caroline Harvey sometimes, right? It's It just is what it is. Um, Wisconsin headed to the Frozen Four to play Colgate. Uh, I think we'll have to have another episode this week to really preview this one because uh, this is a bit jam-packed here and we're already pushing up against a full half hour, of course. Uh, Wisconsin, Colgate, a rematch from a regional final from last season. Should be a great matchup. Any initial thoughts uh, on Wisconsin's national semifinal matchup in New Hampshire? You know, Wisconsin played Colgate last year and they were not the favorite in this game. And they won that game. And then we all know what happened after that. They went on and won the national championship. I expect this game to be another kind of exciting matchup. I think Colgate's going to put up quite a fight. I think Wisconsin's going to put up quite a fight. Should be a fun frozen four between these two teams. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's This is going to be, you know, all, you know, putting all your chips in and going at it and playing some hockey for 60 minutes. Uh, if you if you like to watch this team like like I do, uh, saying I I hope we get two more games of this team. The the St. Lawrence head coach today in his post game interview was talking about we we got a team back in our conference in the ECAC that plays a lot like this Wisconsin team, and it is Colgate uh, was his words. So we could have a fast paced fun matchup to watch in the national semifinal. Uh, the other national semifinal, Ohio State will be there. <laughs> Noah, Noah, your your pick to go to the Frozen Four, Minnesota Duluth. How'd they do today? They they did not do well, Kedrick. They they I had been saying I think Minnesota Duluth will pull up an upset, and I was very very wrong. And uh, yeah, after losing the same team five times in a row, it's hard to come out in that sixth matchup and beat them, especially after you acquired uh, overtime against UConn just a couple of days prior. Plus, 
real deflating when Ohio State comes out and scores on you 22 seconds in. Um, Duluth falls to the Ohio State Buckeyes 9 nothing in that national semifinal. And as we, as we record, Minnesota and Clarkson locked in a 2-2 battle in the fourth overtime for that last spot in the Frozen Four in New Hampshire. Uh, the Golden Gophers just may not end up leaving Potsdam, New York, and may just go directly over, take a bus uh, over to Durham, New Hampshire, at the tail end of this one. What a day, Noah. What a day. Final, final thoughts on the day? Oh, yeah. Go at it tomorrow. Let's win a Big Ten championship tomorrow, you know, or at least when this episode drops. But, you know, yeah, this, this got to go out tonight at this point, right? Oh, the, the vibes are too high. The vibes are too high. high. Okay, <laughs> so let's go win a Big Ten championship tomorrow, please. <laughs> please and thank you. That would be very nice. But uh, on Wisconsin, what a day. Uh, on Wisconsin, what what a day in Batchers fandom. And tomorrow, one of the best days of the year. Selection Sunday. In less than 24 hours, Noah, we're going to have a bracket. We're gonna have a bracket with sixty-eight teams. Who you got? Who's who's winning the title? What's you got? A, you got a prospective Final Four here for the national championship? For, yeah, why not for basketball? Yeah, why not? You know, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be a homer and just say Wisconsin. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna be the homer and say Wisconsin. At this point, you know why not? They beat Purdue. Why not? So, uh, yeah. Why why not the Badgers? Do you believe? Do you believe? Like, you know, and I are, is there, is there going to be another national title coming to Madison? Or is there going to be two national titles coming to Madison? <laughs> oh, signing off from Lebanon Arena. It is 623 PM on Wisconsin. <laughs>